welcome to the Tuesday edition of the DC Today. Um, markets down a little bit today. NASDAQ was actually up a little. I'll, I'll do the uh, market recap real quickly. I want to talk a little bit about the state of the jobs market. Um, as far as the market today, Dow was down 79 points, just 0.2%. Uh, S&P barely down six basis points. NASDAQ barely up, up 30 basis points. Pretty good rally in the bond market. Uh, Ten-year all the way down to 4.18%, down 11 basis points. So uh, rally continuing in bonds. Top performing sector was technology in the stock market, up 82 bit basis points. Energy was down 1.7%. Pretty big hit today to the uh, energy and and uh, production, excuse me, exploration and production side of energy. The uh, crude oil price closed still at 72.50, right down about uh, 80 basis points. Not a huge move in oil. Um, in terms of the job market, a few things going on at once. The weekly jobless claims remain very low. That's, that seems to indicate continued healthy employment. Um, the quits rate has definitely come lower, uh, but it had been quite high, people voluntarily leaving their job. And even though it's come down from those highs of 2022, early 22, um, it's still elevated historically. The number of job openings remains quite high. Now, this number is called the JOLTS data, and it came in today for last month down several hundred thousand from where it had been the month before, but it came in at 8.7 million. So yeah, the days of 10, 11 million job openings has definitely gone away, but um, that average at around six and a half to seven million for years pre-COVID, we're still you know one and a half to two million above that rate uh, on an ongoing basis. The average work week has steadily declined on the margin, and what we're talking about is we were at 35 hours is like the 15 year average, let's call it since post uh, GFC. But right now it's come down to 34.25. Um, so you may think 0.75 hours isn't a huge difference, but these are definitely things that kind of move on up or down on the margin. Um, there are several data points that have softened in recent weeks but not softened to what can be called weak. They've softened to be less strong. And this to me is the theme of the job, the jobs market overall, labor conditions overall. That whether it's job openings, a quit rate, weekly jobless claims, uh, the, 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 the kind of whole ecosystem of data that one could use to look at it, they're all good numbers. And they're all less good than they were maybe six months ago or so, six to 12 months ago. That to me is a summary of where we are. As we get ready to head um, into Friday, the BLS, the, the month of November Bureau of Labor Statistics report, this is kind of where we are. A few other market tidbits real quick. I think some of them are important. So if you're ready to tune out, um, hang in there for just a bit. A, I'm really surprised. It's becoming a very consistent theme. How many companies that I follow that are in, interluding to comment, interjecting to comment that they are seeing weakening of their business in China. Uh, it's becoming very consistent across multiple sectors uh, in, in reports and analysis and research that I do literally every day. Um, small cap value has outperformed small cap growth quite a bit since the middle of the year. Large cap growth has outperformed large cap value. These two things, growth to value relationship from small cap to large cap are normally highly correlated. They have absolutely uh, broken apart in that correlation. And it'll be very interesting to see what the uh, inevitable reversion to the mean will look like. Uh, less than 20% of the S&P 500 was above its 50-day moving average a month ago. More than 80% of the S&P is above its 50-day moving average now. Um, I, what's interesting, by the way, some of the big seven names, these kind of major tech uh, companies that have driven a lot of the market return, um, they, well, how do I say this? Because it's a little different story by story. 
um, some of them names have not moved at all in the last six months, uh, are, are pretty well flat. Uh, they have moved up and down because there's been a lot of volatility uh, within the six months. But from starting point to ending point, pretty well flat in a few of these names. It's quite interesting. The broader market has been playing catch up. Uh, 2024 earnings expectations. Do go ahead and take note of these numbers. Right now, and I'm going to have this updated before I go do my year-end white paper that we do every year, but 2024 earnings expectations are now up to $246 a share for the S&P next year. Uh, looks like we're going to end this year at about $221. So unless there's big revisions downward, right now they're projecting 11.3% year-over-year earnings growth in the S&P from 2023 to 24, that's $221 a share to 246 of earnings. That would be very amazing, very surprising if it happened. But even at these earnings levels, if you hit this 246 number, we are right now at 18.6 times S&P earnings forward uh, on those optimistic projections. Um, if you look over the last 12 months, uh, we are at 20.7 times. So there, there's um, high valuations here, both trailing and forward, no matter where you come down on things. All right, that's pretty much the scoop. Um, I gave, there's a great Ask David to take a look at, and I, and I gave you the economic data for the day. Let me leave it there. Uh, I'll be with you again tomorrow here in the DC today. Um, Reach out with any questions, questions at thebonsoongroup.com. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and thanks for reading the DC Today.